Hi, my name is Dave, and today I'm going to give you a tour of this beautiful 4-inch F15 refractor uh, Tinsley on a Tinsley equatorial mount. This equatorial mount here is extremely rare. People have only seen drawings of those in some of the old Tinsley catalogs. Um, and it is beautifully made. However, it is not up to the task of holding a 4-inch F15 refractor. It's not clear if this mount goes with this telescope or not. It's very possible that they don't go together and that the mount was made for something much smaller or perhaps discontinued after a short time in use with this telescope. Anyhow, I'll give you some close-ups, some interesting views, etc. Take a closer look at this mount. This is a Tinsley tripod and the head here is Tinsley also. It is, however, from their Altaz mount. It's not clear that this head actually belongs with this, uh, with this mount. So that's n not at all clear. We've put them together and they do work, but um, it's probably not designed to go that way. This, w this weight is very heavy. So it's, uh, it's actually too much weight for the weight of the telescope. And it's way too much for the weight of the anything that should be on this mount. So it has me very, very confused. Nevertheless, it is clear that it is Tinsley. And although some of these parts, for example, those have been replaced with nice stainless steel parts and so forth. Um, and these, the paint has been stripped from the knobs and so forth. It's also clear that that is Tinsley. Let's see that this works quite nicely. clutch device inside there is just wonderfully interesting. This is what I started with. These are the parts to make the equatorial mount. I want to show you how this assembly works. Uh, this is right ascension and declination. They're, they're both identical. And this is how the worm works with all the assembly here. Very nice, elegant, nicely made very tight. The, the machining on this thing is extremely tight. This is what it's going to end up looking like when I'm done. And here's what I start with. <clears throat> you can picture this has to go on Anyhow, here. that is then it's going to go in here. There's going to be a, a, an assembly of bearings like so. I believe modern would be just one sealed ball bearing to do this. Uh, and then the gear is going to be in between there. So you're going to have those two things. <coughs> this slides on here. This allows you to adjust the tension here in the whole assembly so that you can squeeze this thing together and make sure that everything stays nice and tight this way. Right? That's going to go in there. This is just to tighten that down. Extremely well made. Very... And this is high class stuff here. And then these go on here. And there are drive pins that go in there. So then you're going to have the whole thing just like that. Simple as can be. And beautiful and elegant. These things are just elegant. You can tell that these are hand turned. Look at the difference between that and that right there. Each one is an individual piece, probably turned by two different machinists or on two different days. Who knows? Anyway, each puts their own particular flair on things. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Okay, let's take a look at this friction clutch mechanism. Got several pieces here. <clears throat> this is essentially a gear that has been hollowed out. And it's beautiful. It's a nice, it's a beautiful piece of machining. This uh, steel axis fits right in there. This is going to slide right on the axis. And I've got a friction plate that goes like so. And this plate here has some screws that you can tighten down to um, 
tighten down this wavy this is basically a wavy washer there so the wavy washer is going to go in between here and you can see that's going to act as a a friction clutch once I can figure out how to line all these screw holes up that looks pretty good okay so now I've put a little dab of grease greased it up where there is uh, contact Let's see if I can reassemble this thing Okay, I don't know if you can tell, but that's turning pretty, quite easily there, smoothly. It's really an elegant design. This is the right ascension setting circle, and I have to mount that before I can slide the right ascension axis on there. And you can see, well first of all I want you to notice there's a threaded bit there. That's how this thing is going to work. So this goes on and seats right in there. There's a bearing and I've already got the other bearing seated in here. So now it's mounted. And now the next bit would be screw to, this on. So this is going to go on here like that. Next thing that's going to happen is this assembly. It's going to go over that sit like so. Slide this on so that it matches. Now I put a wrench back here and tighten this thing down. It's a pretty piece there. I've got a couple of uh, vernier scales that still go on here. I'll put those on later. Of course, this needs a little grease. Boy, that thing is mechanically gorgeous. Very, very elegant. And uh, of course, I can adjust the friction here if necessary. The other axis should be very, very similar. Almost exactly the same thing. Here's a close-up of the beautiful setting circle with the elegant vernier scale. I hope you've enjoyed my tour of this beautiful 4-inch Tinsley F15 refractor on an equatorial mount. Thank you.